Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos and in 2020, I'm endeavouring to complete the whole Brain Dance series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at that section that I just demoed and give you some reasons as to why Matt Gaskar designed those drum parts. Let's take a look at the guitars and the three drum parts that were designed over those guitars. There are two main themes going on in the music. This grouping of 5 sixteenths and this longer phrase which spans two bars of five beats. Let's put them together with the drum parts to get a closer look at the three different feels on display. The first design has the kick following Javier's riff and this one snare and china accent. The right hand lays down a quarter note pulse. These snare accents also imply Tosin's grouping of five. The second design involves the same kick following Javier's riff. The snare accents following the 5 sixteenths in a 2 and 4 backbeat style. The biggest change is the right hand plays in unison with the riff and kick combo, further emphasizing the riff. The ghost notes become relentless here, leaving no 16 note space untouched. The final design also has the same kick and riff combo and 5 16 snare backbeat style. This time, the right hand plays a pattern of 3 plus 2 on the hi-hats and also the stack together with the backbeat, further emphasizing this quintuplet feel. There are no ghost notes this time. Now we can consider the difference between those drum parts and come up with reasons as to why Matt Gaskar decided to write them that way. If you were to look at just the guitars, they are essentially repeating the same phrase for one minute. And we all know too much repetition can be boring for any listener. Hence, it's up to the drums to complement the repetitive guitar parts, but also contrast them enough to spice things up and distract the listener from the constant repetition. Matt decided to have all three designs keep the same complementary kick and snare accent pattern. Kick to complement Javier, snare to complement Tosin. He changes up his right hand's roll to first imply a simple quarter note pulse, switching to complement Javier's riff, then switching out to complement Tosin's. The distribution of ghost notes also play a large role in shaping the feel. The section starts with some ghost notes transitions into a barrage of non-stop ghost notes, which gives the feeling of someone stepping hard on the gas pedal, and finally omitting them completely, when combined with the switched feel from quarter pulse to unisons to fives, feels like the car went over a ramp and is now airborne, and then Matt returns to the first design which is when that car would have touched down. At least that's what it feels like to me. All of this really helps to disguise the repetitiveness of the guitars and at the same time generate a ton of musical interest. I like that it's not apparently obvious too. I only noticed the snare accents were the same throughout when I was analysing the parts for this episode. I didn't even notice it after hearing this song for the 100th time or from learning the parts. The second time through the three drum designs, Matt puts in very slight variations to the last four bars of the section which once again creates a welcome change in the feel of the music but without going overboard. Next, I'm going to show you how I approached practicing all of this. I'll start with design 2 because there aren't many technical difficulties when it comes to design 1. Design 2 is difficult because it's not easy to maintain the constant stream of ghost notes on the left hand, especially when you combine it with some of the rim shots. So it's important to take apart some of the little groupings to practice before you can put everything nicely together. Design 3 will benefit from your ability to modulate metrically and accurately and not just based off feel. To make sure you can do that, training with a quarter note click is a must. This ensures that you can accurately judge the grouping of 5 spacing over a quarter note pulse.
If you are interested in seeing my entire practice process, I make them available to all my patrons on a weekly basis. You will get to see weekly videos of what I am practicing, all my thoughts, plans and routines when it comes to practicing and progressing. Anyway, let's do the entire section slowed down and then up to speed. It was a great pleasure making this video. You can support my work by joining the Art of Drumming faction and get exclusive perks that will help you along your drumming journey. Thank you for watching and in the meantime, don't stop dreaming and don't stop drumming.